Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they have encouraged, strengthened, and helped believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratte Podcast Network. My name is Ryan Bush. A few weeks ago, I drove down to New Albany, Mississippi to spend some time with my friends there at the Media Gratte headquarters. It was a real pleasure to have lunch with the Media Gratte team and then to sit down with John Snyder and discuss some topics that are really important to me. One is family worship, and the second is hymns. Now, both of those podcasts in full you can check out at at mediagratte.org slash podcasts, and just look at the whole council. You'll see the, the different podcast episodes. I want to share with you today, to kick off Season 3, a few snippets from my discussion with John Snyder concerning hymns. I, I think some of the things that we talked about there can be a real encouragement to you, and I, I encourage you to go listen to the whole podcast, but I want to share with you a few highlights today. And I also want to encourage you to, if you haven't yet, Choose a hymnal to be your hymnal for personal devotion. It might be good to get the same hymnal that you use in your church. Use this same hymnal along with your family, but keep it close at hand there with your Bible. As you have personal times of devotion with the Lord, open that hymnal and sing to Him. Sing until your heart is warm to Christ. International Church Planters, which is the mission that Ryan leads. Um, you can find that in the show notes and see that in the link. So Ryan, tell us something about the podcast. Yeah, so it kind of stumbled upon it, or maybe it fell in my lap. I, uh, I, a few years ago, I became interested in in the songs of our faith. Really, the Lord was doing something in, in my own life in terms of my seriousness about uh, shepherding my family and uh, guarding what they were taking in and for their spiritual nourishment, as as well as myself, what, what my I, I myself was was consuming, and it set me on this sort of journey to uh, learning to appreciate hymns and seeing the value of them, and kind of a, a side effect of that was learning these these stories behind the hymns and about them. So why a certain hymn was written. And then how hymns were used in the lives of Christians over the past hundreds of years and how they've ministered. And I, I was so encouraged. I, I, honestly, I, I at first I fell in love with hymns. I just so moved by those the, the, the songs of our faith that have stood the test of time, how they ministered to me. And, and then as I saw their background, I, I fell in love with the the hymn writers and their their suffering, their faithfulness, their love for Christ um, was very meaningful to me. And so I thought, Man, I want to share this with others. <laughs> that's a, that's a, maybe a downfall of mine. I, I tend to take on probably too many projects, but I thought this is worth it to try to put something together to share with others the, the rich history and meaning behind these hymns so that they too um, could be uh, moved by them, encouraged to listen to them, and drawn closer to Christ. So, Him Stories, the podcast was born. In spite of the fact that archaic language and sometimes complex thought mm -hmm. um, and older style tunes yeah. do require extra work, yes. why would we think that it's worth it. So what are some areas that you find that hymns are particularly beneficial for? Yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, I, and in my family, as, as we began to implement the use of hymns and we, we began to, of course, we, we knew a good number, but as I uh, exposed my family to more of those, um, we, we learned new ones. And of course, of course, they're not new, but they're new to us. Um one thing that I, that I began to see is that my kids and myself, my wife, we were we were learning theological concepts from these songs, and we were grappling with theological issues um, that we hadn't expected to grapple with. But as you sing, you know, I ask the Lord that I might grow. Um, John Newton hymn from the Oni hymns, 
and and it's you know it says that he's breaking our earthly schemes of joy. Mm. Um, wow. Yeah, that we may find our joy in him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You talk about uh, you talk about being hit between the eyes, and then having to talk to your kids about well, here's the ways that the Lord has, have, has broken my earthly schemes. When I was this age, this is what happened, and in fact, this is happening now. Are there any earthly schemes that you have that you're trying to find your own joy in something else? So, yeah, it, it forced us to confront the truths of Scripture in a in a way that we hadn't before. We we talked before the podcast, uh, Colossians chapter three, and there's a there's a mirror verse in Ephesians. But in Colossians 3, verse 16, Paul says this, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Yeah. And the Greek there is quite picturesque. It's almost as if you throw open the front door, and it's not like the way you open a door to um, a neighbor that you say, hey, come on in, and you only expect them to come into the living room. If they walked past you and went to your bedroom, you'd go, um, <laughs> hey, um, something wrong? Uh, what's going on, you know? Yeah. Um, and then a friend, they can come in and they, they can go, I mean, they can go into your kitchen. They can go in your refrigerator if they want. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. family, they go everywhere, right. you know, like kids. They, yes. they go everywhere. Yeah. And um, yeah. we throw open the door of our soul and every door in the soul, you know, every area of life, every compartment that we would be tempted to close, we throw it open to the word of Christ to have free access to. And then strangely, Paul says some other things about that. He says, do this with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to God. Mm -hmm. So Paul puts singing, and we're talking about hymns or psalms, whatever. Good truth being sung is a a tool for teaching. Yeah. Um, Charles Wesley and John Wesley, 18th century. Um, as the movement was really getting moving over there, the evangelical revival, the Methodist movement, uh, obviously they were very significant men. And in the early days, John was the author who tended to focus on writing theological books, publishing his sermons. Mm -hmm. Uh, Charles kind of focused on writing hymns. And uh, in the early days of the movement, Charles told John that if John wanted to write all the theological works, that would be fine. And Charles would write the great majority of the hymns. But by the end of their life, the Methodists would believe what Charles wrote because people tend to believe what they sing. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about the fact that you and I almost have read almost nothing of John Wesley's works, Mm -hmm. but we know scores of hymns by Charles Wesley. And Charles Wesley has the best of his hymns have helped fashion my understanding of the Lord have helped throw the doors of the heart open, mm-hmm. you know, so the, the wonderful hymn, and can it be, yeah. Yeah. you know, that, that, asto- that astonishment as we see the son of God take our place. Mm. And, you know, and it's, you know, it's just so beautiful. And that was taught to me through a hymn. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. To listen to the full interview with John Snyder, go to mediagratiaorg slash podcasts and check out the whole council. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make melody in your heart to him.